right. And uh, I, I hope you saw the video of that landslide or whatever that is of in Norway where these homes literally were taking out to out to sea. What is that, Mike? Did you see that? Yeah, you know, I did see that. And it um, actually a couple of, uh, was it last month? Um, last month and, and, and uh, was it uh, two other times in February, I believe, contributed to each person, each individual. Um, imagine, imagine a world designed that people believed was, you know, that's the way it is. Just like if you're born in a different country, you believe that culture is the way it is. If you're born Muslim, you believe that religion is the religion. If you're born in another nation, uh, everything you grew up with is normal to you. Uh, so I, I pose a question. How would those know who lived in any specific time of massive biblical change? How would they ever know? they're in that time to them it will be normal just as sure as the children in Sodom and Gomorrah didn't know that was Sodom and Gomorrah they didn't know they were going to be in history um, but we have contributed uh, to something and also have become blind to something we accepted um, we accepted the teachings not to see we've shut our own eyes and what we have contributed to is um, you know, we have also approved also. I would like to show everybody how they helped a system be perfected. The very system that's rising right now, but they have contributed to and how that matches with what the Lord told us not to do. He, he gave us warnings in our, in our conduct and everything else. We have helped to fine tune a system that is alive. Now this system is not flesh and blood, but it's alive is what I'm saying. Yeah. And, we have helped it. We volunteered to help it. Why? Because we wanted to have fun. We wanted to, to relax and do all these things. But this system is, is very difficult to escape. Um, I mean, it's very difficult to escape. And it fights our spirits directly, almost on a daily basis. And there is a reason people get um, they, that, that you can pray, that you can be full of the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, everything comes at you right? Your electronic devices don't work properly. That, that's one notable thing people should really notice. If you are in your home and you get frustrated just a little, there, your, your equipment could start failing and everything else. That's, that is being helped by another element that is very acquainted with all of us. But likewise, if you're, if you're praying and doing all these things, there's something that's your electronics will do something to attempt to aggravate you and maximize in that aggravation to try and get you away from that mindset of rejoicing in the Lord. And it happens over and over again, but we're blind to it. We can't see it. We can't combat it because we're not identifying well, we're, it. Yeah, we're dealing with spiritual warfare. I mean, we're, uh, we're, we're dealing with unseen evil forces or demonic forces or uh, or, or foreign entities uh, uh, that are adversaries against us and we're not sometimes conscious enough spiritually discerning enough and I think what you're saying is this is another reason why you need the gifts of the spirit to be able to discern what you're encountering and why things are going a little haywire I mean we are dealing we're, we, we're not wrestling with flesh and blood but principalities and powers and the spiritual wickedness in high places I mean I think it's a great point. And so you want to tie that into this aliens, AI, and the Antichrist. I know you're going to talk about all three of those categories with some info. Yeah, because there are elements of reinforcement. Um, things initiate unseen. But believe me, there is a physical part that has likely interacted with everybody that has helped the unseen portion. But once a person knows about it, um, well, then that changes everything. It really does. Mike, they're also, better, they're Mike, better equipped. Amen. Mike, also, just real quick, guys, tomorrow night there's going to be a full strawberry moon, okay? And it's tonight, actually, and tomorrow night. So we have a full moon tonight and tomorrow night. It's not a blood moon. It's not a red moon. It's a strawberry moon. That's called that because it is strawberry season. It's the first full moon of June. It's always called the strawberry moon. It's tonight and tomorrow night, so keep an eye on that. But don't forget, we are going to have a lunar eclipse, a blood moon, over all of America on the 4th of July. And it actually starts at 11.07 Eastern Standard Time 
just before the midnight hour and it will last for about three hours it will carry us into uh, over into midnight and is a blood moon it's one of the uh, things that i've been talking about and it, how prophetic is this blood moon over america with everything that's going on on our nation's fourth of july mike we did get one of our uh, navy veterans out of prison the president was able to release michael white after over 600 days uh and it was a prison swap with one of their scientists. Uh, any comments you have on that? Yeah, oh, that was uh, that was a good move there. I, I can, uh, you know, first of all, that is uh, that is excellent. Um. Against us, and we are not sometimes conscious enough, spiritually discerning enough. And I think what you're saying is this is another reason why you need the gifts of the spirit to be able to discern what you're encountering and why things are going a little haywire i mean we are dealing we're, we, we're not wrestling with flesh and blood but principalities and powers and the spiritual wickedness in high places i mean i think it's a great point and so you want to tie that into this aliens ai and the antichrist i know you're going to talk about all three of those categories with some info yeah because there are elements of reinforcement um things initiate unseen but believe me, there is a physical part that has likely interacted with everybody that has helped the unseen portion. But once a person knows about it, um, well, then that changes everything. It really does. Mike, they're also, better, they're Mike, better equipped. Amen. Mike, also, just real quick, guys, tomorrow night there's going to be a full strawberry moon, okay? And it's tonight, actually, and tomorrow night. So we have a full moon tonight and tomorrow night. It's not a blood moon. It's not a red moon. It's a strawberry moon. That's called that because it is strawberry season. It's the first full moon of June. It's always called the strawberry moon. It's tonight and tomorrow night. So keep an eye on that. But don't forget, we are going to have a lunar eclipse, a blood moon over all of America on the 4th of July. And it actually starts at 1107 Eastern Standard Time just before the midnight hour and it will last for about three hours it will carry us in uh, over into midnight and is a blood moon it's one of the uh, things that i've been talking about and it, how prophetic is this blood moon over america with everything that's going on on our nation's fourth of july mike we did get one of our uh, navy veterans out of prison the president was able to release michael white after over 600 days uh and it was a prison swap with one of their scientists. Uh, any comments you have on that? Yeah, oh, that was uh, that was a good move there. I, I can, uh, you know, first of all, that is uh, that is excellent. Um, and I can only imagine the grief of being held in the first place. Um, if anybody ever had experience being held against the will in a place they're not familiar with, it is um, it's something else. But there's still more or people over there possibly maybe uh the things are in the works for the rest of them so you know that that is a uh, that's a good move that's a very good move and i understand it is is somewhat overshadowed by some of these protests and that that's a conversation that should have been had a long time ago but uh, uh that's still a good move that's a good move mike you know what Andy? go ahead go ahead mike i'm sorry we have pastor we've got um you, that's one thing that really we don't think about a lot is there's so many u.s soldiers right detained in other nations uh i think it will be shocking for anybody to find out just how many are held in these other places for whatever the case is but uh it's shocking to know that um with all of what goes on right we're, we're not um we're not really that sensitive to people being held like that. Not everybody is. It's not one of those public issues that bothers. You know what? In fact, they made it known that people were held overseas um, last year. Remember, nobody moved. There, there, no, but there was no feedback on the news. They gave the story, and it's almost like nobody cared. They said, "Okay, next subject." You know, it was it's a sad thing, but but I take it to heart because i i put my life on the line for this country right and if yeah. somebody puts their life on the line for the country, i also know what it's like to be spit on when you come back after combat 
to, for no one to like what you did because they don't understand what you did, right? I know what that's like, and I know what it's like to be spit on and do it anyway, regardless if they spit on you or not, because you're doing it for a different cause and to be appreciated by anybody. You're doing it for real, and that makes a difference. Well, those guys held overseas, a lot of them, they do what they do for real. And when they get held like that, um, they fight with everything that they are just to continue to make it. Yet, as uh, most of the citizens over here, they don't know about them. It's not something that, um, that, that people, that excites anybody, that bothers too many folks, or it's just unfortunate. And, and um, I think to a large degree in this nation, um, it's time for us to really start to uh, really think again. What we need to start calling, our, if we're gonna call ourselves Americans, then do that because to call yourself an American means you have American values. And those values are not to leave everybody in the dust and to go on with the next, you know, the next best cell phone. Everybody gets excited about a cell phone, but they won't lift a finger for uh, some of these individuals called overseas. That's, that's very unfortunate. And Christians should never have that heart. We should be the first ones to know what it's like to be pushed to the side we should be there because to come to christ all of us can almost admit in order for us to come to christ we had to be pushed into a corner first we had to be stripped of many things uh in preparation to that or normally people don't naturally call out for christ when things are going well we have examples of that in the world but things did not go well for us and we began to identify the darkness that we didn't work well in the darkness. We don't belong in that place. And, um, but we cried out and the Lord answered. Well, doesn't he ask of us to do the same thing for our fellow? He man? does, he does. Mike, uh, quick, some other questions real quick before we get out of time. What about China right now? There's been, uh, they, uh, you know, the anniversary of Tenement Square, a proclamation was made that the, it's against the law now to recite the Hong Kong or to sing the Hong Kong national anthem or to wave the Hong Kong flag that they must submit to communist regime. Yet there was a declaration of independence from China. People in China are declaring their independence from communist China today. This is just breaking the last two to three hours. What is going on over there? The protests are coming back. You remember they had those protests and then that virus shut the protests down. The protests are coming back, that's unfinished business. The people over there are tired of being ruled with an iron fist. The unfortunate part is they're outnumbered uh, by so, you know, China, have you checked the last troop count? It's estimated their troop count in China, uh, as far as the soldiers are concerned. But the new islands that were formed, that, are, that have um, technology on there, that is gonna give us a headache very soon. Um, it is just, they're flowing over, they're overflowing with soldiers. Um, and most of their people who are not soldiers, they're not, um, they're kept in the, in the dark about a great many things, but um, China doesn't care. China's gonna force um, their culture, just like they have been. They're gonna continue to, to, to uh, resist every, every single outsider's advice and changing the core of that place. You know, that's really what we're finding, like right now, Iran, you don't hear about Iran, do you? But you're about to. Um, you don't hear about uh, Kim Jong Un, but you're about to. Because these guys, just like these folks in the United States, Pastor Paul, are the people who have, you know, they're up to their head with aggravation. So are these other nations. And it's starting to boil over. You know, um, there are recent movements that, that express that point. Very dangerous movements. Nevertheless, it happened. I know it's going to it's going to have some consequences. I just hope everybody is ready for the consequences. Uh, and and all this at a time when tom I know tomorrow at around um, I believe it's five fifteen. Um, physical issues may start happening to people everywhere because of an inbound pulse. As at five fifteen p.m. Whoa! Tomorrow, wait a minute. Uh, five fifteen p.m. Eastern. PM. 5.15 p.m. Eastern, we're getting ready to get hit with some kind of inbound pulse, yes, pulse wave, yeah. wave of energy. Starts, uh, now, here's what I personally want to do, Pastor. I want to tie in some of this radiation with the physical attributes of people. So I'm looking for folks who have experienced um, headaches around that time tomorrow. Um, somewhere around that time, maybe an hour before, hour after, or during that time. But I want to know 
who's not feeling quite right around that time because we certainly have a pulse coming through. What the effects of this pulse is, I, I have no idea. Uh, the Earth is overcharged. It could trigger things in the sun. It could trigger things in the Earth. Uh, we're going to find out tomorrow. Where's um, the so what's the source of the pulse? Is it the one of the waves of energy? Or it is part of the same it's the same the same exact thing that's been smacking us for some years now and, and they're gonna since august 17th of 2000 yeah. um uh, 15 16 they're gonna keep you know coming through like this more radiation so tomorrow 5 15 p.m i'm i am uh curious to see the physical effects on people because i suspect something passed to fall i know that um uh the magnetosphere is, is normally affected by these things. It not only does it direct high-speed particles, but the magnetosphere affects the way people's, uh, the way a person's emotions are. In other words, if we had a certain pattern of magnetic influence around the earth, people would become highly irritated. I mean, highly irritated all at one time, especially those who rely upon their emotions to navigate their day. So with that aggravation, with what's going on in the world, if our magnetosphere is highly affected by this stuff tomorrow, uh, there can be quite a few incidences. Out here's, there in the a, world. here's a quick report, Mike. This just came out. Uh, Popular Mechanics put this out, and here's what it says. The Earth's magnetic field is shaking things up once again. Now, Heidi gave me this information this morning. Sloshing liquid iron in the Earth's outer core, which lies roughly 1,900 miles below us, generates our planet's protective magnetic field. It guards against solar winds that ferry damaging charged particles. It also guides the navigation systems that direct everything from smartphones to satellites. In recent decades, our magnetic field has been changing. We know, for instance, that the magnetic North Pole has been shifting at a record speed in recent years. But now scientists are using the European Space Agency uh, with swarm satellites are monitoring the weakening of the Earth's magnetic field in a region that stretches from Africa to South America. They dubbed it the South Atlantic Anomaly. So you're saying tomorrow though, the Earth is going to get hit with a pulse, a wave of energy on June 5th at 5.15 p.m. Are we gonna feel it here in the United States? We could, I'm unsure as to what it can do, but that's only part of the tip of the iceberg tomorrow. Um, that's 5.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so everybody gets the right uh, time zone because I'm very curious. So what else? What else tomorrow? People. What else tomorrow? Well, there's still, but see, we have this inbound, we have debris issues all over the place, Pastor Paul, and um, we still have inbounds, and these inbounds uh, will begin to increase as far as their uh, fireballs that enter into the atmosphere, which, you know, you'll be able to, people will be able to see these fireballs as they intensify a number because they'll be super bright. It'll be hard to miss them. Um, but we're going to have an increase of these things. You know, it'll be, um, because they come in clumps, you know, maybe one week we see a bunch of fireballs, maybe it relaxes the next week, and then the week after that we see a bunch more until it gets to the point we are entertaining fireballs almost on a daily basis. Um, I know it seems unreal now, but when the damage begins, when the fires begin, when, when, when all, the, the, uh, uh, all of what goes with that begins, it'll be unmistakable. Uh, the excuses will run out. I think that people are at the point right now, they're not interested in excuses, which is causing a bigger problem because, um, well, they foresaw this coming. I can tell you that right now, which is why our communications are, are being handed over. Uh, because they have to control the flow of information. I believe that prior to these riots, prior to this death of this individual, there were some reports that came out concerning 5G, concerning uh, certain laws that would control communication, concerning the regulation of social media. I believe we discussed that, but isn't it, it, I want you to look at these events. All that came out prior to this stuff happening, and then all of a sudden this happens. Well, how do these protests, how are they organized, folks? They're organized through social media. But if social media has the slightest bit of, of governance in it, and it's already been shaken up quite a bit, then they can tangibly 
tamper with communication organization and, and these spontaneous uh, responses like this won't work. But I want people to take note of something. You, this, that happened before the riots ever took place. That happened before this gentleman was killed. Not, not after this happened before. Uh, so, you know, we're dealing with something here that coordinates on a global basis. And, and if, if you're one of those people that's just, oh, it's just coincidence. Well, we've had an entire year full of coincidences. How many more do we need before we finally determine we're dealing with something here that is not playing around with us? And something is setting up and organizing everything against, you know, it's, it's happening. It's not slowing down and speeding up. And so our best defense, we know it's the blood. I'm not worried about any of the effects from these this stuff. I really am not. That's not the, I don't care about getting wounded, hurt, or any of those things, because I know that nothing, nothing will ever happen to me that I cannot handle, because the Lord said he will not place upon you that beyond what you can bear. So I can handle everything that comes my way, so I need not complain, but I sure wish people would open their eyes to see there's, there's a spiritual coordination event taking place right now. It is directly related to, to, to um, uh, some of the topics in the beast, Pastor Paul, that you yeah speak about yep. uh this system is uh, I, I mean if you could see uh if you could see it in the way that i see it you know to me it's like towers are rising up all over the place and uh it's taking control and power every place we lose ourselves this thing is rising it's doing what it wants to do you know Mike, it, uh, I t- <laughs> you're exactly right now today i did a show today and one of the things I wanted to bring out, I think it was just maybe it was yesterday, that in Revelation chapter nine, it talks about the smoke, the furnace, Abaddon, Apollyon rising up and all these, what looked like to John 2000 years ago, what looked like scorpions with stingers in their tails and their helmets in their heads. And they were a mass locusts, but they were metal. He seen them, they were metal. They had iron and, and, uh, and, and they're rising up out of Babylon. And the Lord spoke to me over in the Euphrates River. If you read the scripture, it says it comes out of the it comes out of the Euphrates River area and out of the Babylon area. And the Lord spoke to me and said, do you remember what President Barack Obama said when he said that ISIS was a JV team? He was yeah. right yeah. that ISIS was just men, flesh and blood men running around chopping off Christians heads and murdering people but compared to what was getting ready to be unleashed from Babylon that was the JV team and this hit me hard Mike am, am I am I am I making sense here you're on the money and 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 so there's more to this story and I know Mike knows more than this but I just they just came to me and the Lord said to me you need to tell people they didn't see nothing yet what's going to be released from the bowels of this earth and what man is conjuring up and doing along with the principality and the beast kingdom. Mike, before we let you go, can you come back next Thursday night, June 11th? We need you to come back and tell us more about this pulse that's going to hit us tomorrow night. I will be here, Pastor Paul. In fact, uh, that is the time of a uh, few tools are going to be launched. Uh, for our website. I've been holding back quite a bit until we hit the right season. We're in the right season now, so I can go ahead and do my thing. But um, yeah, we're gonna be, we're, we're, we're really hitting some points of instability. And so we're gonna have much to discuss next week. So, all right, okay, then you can make that announcement next week and we look forward to hearing what that is. Guys, tomorrow night at 5.15 p.m. Eastern, then and before, Mike's saying, Pay attention to what's going on and then and, and let him know we'll we'll even ask you guys next thursday night if you felt the headaches or, or what is it you felt and what all is going on as mike said we don't even know what all we're going to encounter this is another wave of energy that's uh apparently going to hit us on june 5th at 5 15 p.m eastern time and mike has been dead on the last two times so it's not him it's yeah, well, it is him. It's the information he's getting and he's, he's, and he's sharing it with us the best he can. Mike, I want to thank you so much for coming on and being with us tonight. It was a, it was a pleasure to get this info and, it, and giving us this heads up and this update. Well, God bless you, Pastor Paul. It's always an honor. All right. God bless. Lord willing, we will see you t- next Thursday night. God bless.